She can work nine to five and rock a coat of many colors. Yes. Dolly in 2024, y'all. Welcome everybody to entertainment tonight. You know, on this President's Day, we're opening up the ET vault to celebrate someone who's beloved on both sides of the aisle. Because in Dolly, we trust. Jolene, Jolene. Everything else that's happened to me has come from the music. I love to write. That's my gift. You were meant to be a songwriter. Well, I don't know how good I am. I got about 3,000 songs. 25 country number one singles, 10 Grammys, over 100 million records sold. Dolly's prolific music career spans eight decades. She made my coat of many colors. It was my songs, my songwriting that brought me out of the Smoky Mountains and took me all the places I want to go. I wish you love. I Will Always Love You was a, a song that I was real recognized for, and it was one of the, that and Jolene was uh, one of the, well, two of the biggest songs I had ever had. And, uh, but they didn't sell any records. They both only sold like 100,000 copies, which ain't enough to feed my chickens. And I just always thought that song deserved more. I just thought that it was a hit if somebody else would record it. I listened to it and I said, this is the song. This will tie that whole movie together as far as the music is concerned. Whitney's version recorded for The Bodyguard spent 14 weeks at number one and became the best-selling single by a female artist. Whitney did a fabulous job on that. I never had any idea that simple little song of mine could do that, but it, she made it something special. Dolly shared special moments with some of the most iconic artists in the biz, with over 50 collaborations across genres and generations. I the street. That is what you're oh, but I can easily understand. She doesn't really let me call her a godmother. She likes fairy godmother. I feel like a member of people's family, like an Aunt Dolly or like a, you know, like an older sister. Maybe I'm a role model and I hope so. Here you come again. She's a woman who has been successful in everything she's ever done. Just a role model for girls, including myself. Dolly shattered all of those illusions of what a genre and what a boundary was. She's never made any apologies for who she is and that's my favorite kind of artist. Tumble out of bed and I stumble to the kitchen. From country queen to the silver screen, Hello. Dolly skyrocketed to a new level of stardom when she set her sights on Hollywood. You are evil. That's right, evil to the core. There's no such thing as natural beauty. Get down off the cross, honey. Somebody needs the wood. Did you honestly know you were going to be a star? I believe I did. I, that's what I wanted to do. I always felt that I was supposed to do it because I wanted to be famous, I wanted to be rich. Dolly's breakout role in the 1980 comedy classic 9 to 5 earned her three Golden Globe nominations. And the anthem she penned while filming turned the movie into a movement, earning her the first of two Oscar nominations and two Grammys. Oh, and you just love it, don't you? Working nine to five. See, I wrote it to play with my nails. What a way. It meant a lot to me, the fact that it brought attention to all us gals asking for equal pay for equal work, and it has done a lot of good. Dolly scored her second Best Actress Golden Globe nod two years later for the movie musical The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas. Although it was successful money-wise, it, it, it wasn't really that, you know, that great as far as the critics and everybody was concerned. She bounced back with another female-driven hit, Steel Magnolias. She told E.T. she went to beauty school for the role. This is going in the hairdo hall of fame. Now I'm having to cut everybody's hair. I've become like a beautician in my own family. My husband won't let, ever let anybody cut his hair again. I really, I've acted myself into a corner. Throughout her more than 40 years in the business, Dolly's made over 400 TV appearances and starred in over a dozen feature films. I'd like to think with me, you know, there'll, there'll always be something I can play just because I'm Dolly Parton that's been around for 100 years. And personally, 
I have been waiting for a nine to five reunion ever since we did the first one. Dolly's reunited with Jane and Lily more than seven times. And when it comes to a reboot. I didn't want to do a sequel myself. It's like I don't like to chew my tobacco but once. We haven't been able to get a script that we were satisfied with. If you don't have the script, you can't start. And we're trying to make it happen uh, before one of us checks out. <laughs> we make jokes now. To do a remake of 9 to 5 would be more like 95. <laughs> With the rise of Dolly's career came her signature style. I'm kind of a cartoon. I'll probably look this way when I'm 100 if, if I live to be that long. Three words to describe my style. Trashy, trashy, trashy. What's your secret? Oh, there's no real secret. Just lots of makeup and good doctors and a good attitude. Everybody knows Dolly wears great big wonderful wigs and tight clothes and heavy makeup. Why did you decide to look like you look? Most of it came from a very sincere place because I felt very plain. I felt very big inside and very outgoing and I just didn't feel like I was uh, all on the outside that I was on the inside. So I wanted the attention. I don't feel cheap, but I don't mind looking cheap. She doesn't feel cheap because that famous figure costs a pretty penny. I'm no natural beauty. <laughs> well, that's makeup, Botox, and collagen, and other nips and tucks. People always say, oh, you just always seem so happy. I said, that is the Botox. So I, I heard that you look at your boobs as show dogs or show horses, right? <laughs> and, you say, and you say you have to keep them groomed. Oh, I do. I call these my weapons of mass dis <laughs> distraction. <laughs> Her breasts are so small, they look like melons. <laughs> More secrets about Dolly's aesthetic? Is it true that you sleep with your makeup on, Dolly? I do. You never know what's going to happen. <laughs> I get up in the morning, I clean my face, I do my mask, uh -huh. and then I put on fresh makeup. Yeah. But I never, I'm not going to bed, you know, looking like a hag. I just ain't going to do it. I'm just going to be ready in case there's a fire or a flood or a, an emergency. Her beauty routine is surprisingly quick. I wear wigs a lot. I do my own makeup. I can be completely ready with everything within an hour, less if need be. Oh, and Miss Dolly almost always keeps her arms and hands covered, oft times wearing these nude gloves. Why? Fans think you have full-fledged sleeves. You've got tattoos. Is this true? I do have a few tattoos, but they're mostly to cover some scars from really? surgeries. I just sit them with flowers, some vines, and a butterfly here and there. What do you think makes a woman pretty? Well, the woman from the inside is the prettiest part, I think, what radiates from the inside out. Like Minnie Pearl says, I mean, any old barn looks better with a little red paint on it. Dolly's husband of 56 years, Carl Dean, may be the only person who's seen her without all that paint. This glamorous Dolly Parton image must have at times been a little intimidating. Not really. He knows how bad I can look. <laughs> The two met outside a laundromat in Nashville in 1964. Dolly was 18 and he was 21. Two years later, they eloped in Georgia. When we got married, Carl put the wedding rings on his mother's serious account. So we paid on that every month. Then years later, I, after we were making some money, I, I lost the little set out of the, the original, and I was just heartbroken. And I thought, oh, how can you ever replace that? Right. So he went back down to Sears and, and bought the stone to replace it and, and paid on it, even though we didn't have to, <laughs> just so it would it kind of still stay like that. For a while, the couple's very private marriage had some fans thinking Carl doesn't really exist. Why is he such a mystery? He's too pretty, I'm afraid, to let him out. <laughs> He's never really photographed a mythic creature at this point. He does not want to be um, in pictures. He don't want to be in magazines. He don't want to be Dolly Parton's husband. He wants to be Carl Dean. The camera-shy businessman is now retired at 80. And while Dolly became a global superstar, Carl stayed focused on his Tennessee pavement company. We have the greatest relationship because, first of all, we're best friends. We really are both very independent people. I need the freedom to work, he needs the freedom to work. I want him to do exactly what makes him happy. In 2015, E.T. was with Dolly, who revealed how they plan to celebrate their 50th wedding anniversary. We're going to get married again, and we're going to get in our RV and go on a honeymoon. We got all dressed up. He was so handsome, and I had my beautiful <laughs> gown that I didn't get to do before. Now he tells everybody I'm his second <laughs> wife. What's been the key to success? Well, I always joke because I stay gone, and there's a lot of truth in that. I love the old guy. He's the only one I've ever wanted and the only one I'll ever have, I'm sure.
We cannot leave without celebrating one more Dolly Parton achievement. Yes, adding the title of Dolly the rock star. Bye, everybody. See y'all. I'm not even going to record a rock album. It is happening, summer or fall. I'm doing a lot of classic uh, rock songs. I'm having a lot of icon singers sing with me. I like Elton John, I like Paul McCartney, Stevie Nicks, Pink, and Cher. Miley and Cyrus. Miley, of course. Though she's going rock, Dolly has no plans to tour again. As for what's next, well, it's the same thing she told us back in 1982. I do work hard, but I like to work, and uh, I learned while I was off the road that I will never retire. I, I, I like the work. Ah, that's true, I'll never retire. I feel the same exact way. I love to work.